I've often said that Marvel films tend to thrive not when they embody the genre of flawed superhero film, but when they adopt the story and put it into a separate genre. Ant-Man was a heist film, Guardians of the Galaxy is a western, and so forth. Shang-Chi is a wuxia martial arts fantasy film with superhero elements. And anybody doubting the cultural staying power of Marvel films, myself included, is going to be thoroughly surprised at an astonishingly good movie from a character in even many ardent comic fans like myself in their blind spots. I'm Dan Umpton, and this is the Doomcast. First things first, there are spoilers that follow. I'm not trying to ruin anybody's experience of the movie, so please go see it, then come back and watch this. All right, with that out of the way, some backstory. Shang-Chi was created by comic legend Steve Englehart and Jim Starlin in 1973. Now, you have to understand in context that at this point in American popular culture, we had fetishized martial arts and projected a very specific Orientalism onto the whole of Shangguo Wushu and the related spiritual and religious practices on the whole at the same time as we managed to maintain a tremendously pernicious racism against Asian people. Shaw Brothers martial arts film as well as uh, Bruce Lee films were making huge money at the box office, and at the same time, the president of the United States government vilified the Chinese government and its people. Suggested reading, Edward W. Said's Orientalism, published 1978. That said, I don't think that Steve or Jim's motivation in the creation of Shang-Chi was racist in and of itself, but we also have to accept the fact that they were a product of a specific set of assumptions and romanticization of an entire culture, well, hemisphere even, and Marvel wanted to adapt Kung Fu an immensely popular TV show starring David Carradine in the early 70s, and they wanted to put that into comics. And they were denied the rights by Warner Brothers. So they were tasked with creating a character, which was roughly based on Bruce Lee, became Shang-Chi, uh, for the 46th hexagram of the I Ching, and the word Chi, commonly understood as life energy in the West. Now, my own familiarity really began when he was incorporated into John Hickman's Avengers, as well as Greg Pak's Agents of Atlas. But none of that especially matters since Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings really reforms Shang-Chi from the ground up in the way that they decided to do with Guardians of the Galaxy. They're taking elements of the publication history, but really making it its own for the MCU, more than many other properties. With that brief comics history, again, I remind you, spoilers do follow, so please put this down if you don't want to go any further. Shang-Chi is Sean, living in San Francisco since he was 14, along with his best friend, Katie. Uh, he is a valet, an accomplished karaoke partier, and the two of them are caught on a bus by Razor Fist and the other Ten Rings goons looking for his pendant. Apparently, Razor Fist has multiple attachments, one of which I hope is a toothbrush because, ooh, the guy looks fragrant is all I'm saying. The rest of the movie is a quest to track down the other pendant held by his sister to prevent his father, Wen Wu, from opening the path to Talo and free the Dweller in Darkness, an ancient bat-like tentacle dragon, which is literally an H.P. Lovecraft and August Derleth creation. I'm not kidding. Originally created by H.P. Lovecraft. Now that short synopsis sounds like a very generic superhero movie three-act format, and while that's the skeleton of this film, it's visually and structurally fantastic, in my opinion. Every character has an arc, the dialogue is fresh, nothing is particularly corny or forced and every part of it feels pretty much pitch perfect. Uh, the end avoided the everything is on fire giant battle and showdown with a boy everything is very wet giant battle and showdown uh, and yet it held my interest throughout solidly. In fact when he does manage to wrest the rings from Wenwu in combat and begins what is clearly a Kamehameha wave stance our private rented theater of anime nerds started calling it out which was maybe on par for me as a movie going experience along with Cap picking up Mjolnir in Endgame. There's a few things that they drop on you kind of hard. Uh, one, Wen Wu is the Mandarin, as he is in comics, although his Ten Rings function very differently, for sure, and that's technology that he seems to have gotten, possibly, from that dragon that's the Great Protector. It didn't really seem to be Fing Fang Foom, even though I thought he was but that might be as close as we ever get. The Dweller in Darkness is some wild stuff, because remember how I told you Fu Manchu, a pulp villain who was originally Shang-Chi's father? Well, Dweller in Darkness, like I said, was a moniker given by August Derleth to a character created by H.P. Lovecraft, Nyarlat Hotep, and a form of that ended up in Doctor Strange comics and ended up in this movie. But I suppose that we may end up learning more about this MCU version of the Dweller in Darkness and its race in the future. Maybe? 
I hope. Also, where the hell is Wong taking Abomination? Where do they actually hold that guy? It looked like a cell that they kept the Hulk in. So is he with S.H.I.E.L.D.? Well, I mean, Wong is clearly with the Avengers, as we see in the post credit sequence, which gives really little clue as to what the Ten Rings is supposedly summoning or calling. Best guesses I've seen are either Celestials, which we already saw in the press for Eternals, or a literal version of Fin Fang Foom, which maybe? Uh, my money is not on Galactus because it makes hardly any sense to relegate that to a movie other than Fantastic Four, but we'll see. Whatever it is, it's definitely not Mephisto. What Shang-Chi gets really right are memorable, likable characters, a story that feels really exciting without being overly familiar, uh, the canonization of Pokemon in the MCU, I'm kidding. Uh, but really, Destin Daniel Cretton and the crew that built this movie built something that's solid and fun and a franchise. Frankly, I want to see more of Simu Liu as Shang-Chi and Aquafina as Katie. Uh, I really don't know what else is in store for these two in the future, but I'm very excited to see them again. And you too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.